What's going on guys, and today is Herping Tips 2019 video. I'm going to be talking about how to properly identify a venomous snake from a non-venomous snake. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's a lot of videos that are already out there, but it still, to this day, annoys the crap out of me hearing people say, oh, I killed this copperhead the other day, and then it turns out it's just a normal water snake. And they're killing non-venomous snakes thinking they're venomous snakes, and they're just, it's so stupid. <laughs> it drives me crazy. In my opinion, there can't be enough videos that are pumping on this information because maybe someone will break it down to where the most simple of people will be able to grasp it and be like, oh, that makes sense. As we all know, venomous snakes have a triangular shaped head. But, non-venomous snakes pull this tactic off too when they're real defensive and they're standing their ground. For instance, this one. Or, this one. Or better yet, this one. See, all three of those snakes are non-venomous snakes. But what happens, and I've noticed it a lot with like northern water snakes, which is a non-venomous snake. When they get defensive, they'll puff themselves up to make themselves look bigger than life. And in that puffing out stage, their head flattens and their jaw bones make their head look triangular. So people see them and all of a sudden the snake's like, oh no, and just like puffs up real big and they see triangular shaped head and they're like, boom, let's kill it. See, non-venomous snakes do this to mimic venomous snakes. Like they're, they're, they're puffing their body up, making themselves look bigger than life. They're flattening out that head, giving it that triangular look. Black racers and black rat snakes are also known to do this where they rattle their tail in the leaves to mimic a rattlesnake. Non-venomous snakes will do anything and everything that they can do to mimic venomous snakes and mimic the telltale signs that, that venomous snakes use to warn us that, hey, I'm venomous, stay away. And these snakes are like, well, it works for Jimmy over there. Mm -hmm. I'm give it a shot, see what happens. And then they die <laughs> because we're stupid and we don't know the difference. Best case scenario, which I'm going to throw this out after every bit of information I give you, if you don't know what it is, just leave it alone. Don't kill it. Because venomous or non-venomous, a snake is a crucial, vital part of the ecosystem. Like, the reason that you don't have rats and mice all over your farmhouse is because in that barn there's a bunch of black racers and there's a bunch of corn snakes and black rat snakes that are eating all those up. But once you see them and they get that defensive posture and they flatten out that head, you think it's venomous, boom. Next thing you know, you're opening up your cabinet to get a box of Frosted Flakes and uh, there's a bunch of mice because it's you, know, you killed what was killing them so really it's your fault so stop crying you're doing it to yourself yep another way to tell which you should never get too close to a snake that you don't know what it is to be able to tell this this closely but is the eyes now venomous snakes have that vertical slit in the pupil kind of like cat's eye and non-venomous snakes do not they cannot do that there is a thing that will throw people for a loop, and that is venomous snakes don't constantly have this vertical pupil. It can, especially at night, it will go to a circular pupil, like a non-venomous snake. That's another way to tell. Again, if you're that close, just stop it. And another way to tell, which if you are this close to be able to tell this, you are either a experienced veteran or just an idiot who deserves to get bit because you're just that dumb. The tail. The ventral scales, the belly scales, on a venomous snake from the anus to the tip of the tail will be singular. Like I'll say a solid set of scales. On a non-venomous snake, they'll be broken down into two little sets of scales that go down there after that point. Again, if you're holding a snake and you don't know what it is, Quick, look, right there. The head's down here. You just look right there. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a solid row of scales. Probably put this down. Or, oh, a, a split set of scales. We're good. That's all you gotta do. Now, there is one exception to this rule because we have in the United States a uh, class of colubrids and a class of elapids. If we're talking about venomous snakes, colubrids would be your cotton mouths, your copperheads, your rattlesnakes. Elapids would be your coral snakes. 
the lapid snakes basically are front fixed fangs, like cobras, uh, western browns, and fierce snakes, tiger snakes, all those. They're lapids, they have front fixed fangs, their pupils do not have the vertical slit, they do not have the triangular shaped head. They are the exception to the rule. They're the curveball that Mother Nature threw us and it's like, heh. <laughs> Your best case scenario, we lucked out. We don't have a, any lapids here in the United States other than the coral snake. There's an old saying that goes far back as like the beginning of time. Red on yellow, kill a fellow. Red on black, friend of Jack. The black is touching red on the milk snake, and the black is touching yellow. Again, mimicry going on right there. That's a good way to tell, because you don't even have to be really close to it. You can just look down, unless you're colorblind, and then I guess, I guess that would be a problem. Hmm. And if you're colorblind, just stay out of the south. Just stay up north, you'll be good. So yeah, guys, that's the tips that I have for you right here now in this video. Um, if you have any others, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, if it helped you out, if it was educational, if you learned something, give it a thumbs up. I decided to do this video because I don't have a, a vlog for you guys. So, sorry. But, y'all be safe. Happy Herpin.